Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Super Mod. I'm Brad Drake, and I'm your host, as always, for my AWA save. Here we are, folks, rolling along. We're back on tour in the last week of October here. We just had a spot show last episode, and now we are back in St. Paul here on Friday night. And normally, I don't show the screen. Normally, I roll right into our event date, but I thought this was pretty cool. Derek Dukes won the Pro Wrestling America heavyweight title. So he beat none other than Ricky Rice, who also wrestles for us. So we will eventually bring in Derek Dukes, just as the real AWA did. And I just thought that was pretty interesting to see. Let's see if they show... Yeah, there it is. The name of the show was Suicide Solution. Ugh. What the hell kind of name is that? So here was the PWA show. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Pro, Pro Wrestling America, it's still around. It's still running to this day, and it was originally started by Eddie Sharkey, who uh, trained and produced many, many, many wrestlers in the 1980s, including the Road Warriors, uh, Nikita Koloff, Wayne Bloom, Mike Enos, many, many wrestlers. Um, so here was their card for their show, and there's Wayne Bloom, who we... Just started using. There's Tommy Jammer. We changed over Tommy Jammer's picture to that and got rid of that lousy one that was on there before. So I just thought that was interesting. Derek Dukes won the PWA heavyweight title. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll along here. And remember, we just came off of that spot show. And now we are going to run back home in St. Paul. So let's go ahead and adjust our numbers here. Let's get it up to 8,000. I can't remember where we ran last time in St. Paul. Of course, I never do. So <laughs> we'll we'll see what's available here and go from there. we got the River Center, and we are going to run the River Center again. Absolutely. In fact, this is the venue we've been running often, and it makes the most sense for us. So there we go. The River Center is booked. Let's go ahead and take a look at our backstage incidents and our absent workers. Uh-oh, Medusa, what's going on? Oh, Medusa's in a good mood. She put a uh, put together a poker tournament. Good for her. There we got some protege work going here. No, we do not. Nick Bockwinkle went after Alan West here and said, knock off your bullshit. At least that's what I think he probably said to him anyway. Let's take a look at our absent workers. Kevin Kelly is the only one that's out. Now let's take a look at our card. So Vivian St. John is going to battle Reggie Bennett. The Top Guns are going to face the Texas Hangman, who are healthy. Ali Khan is going to face DJ Peterson. Colonel De Beers is going to battle Jerry Blackwell. Sheik Adnan LKC is going to mix it up with the legend Ray Stevens. Rip Oliver is getting in the ring once again with Jerry the King Lawler. Mr. Saito, back from Japan and available tonight, will face Bob Backlund. And in our main event, the new world tag team champions, the Midnight Rockers, will defend their tag title against none other than the hated Midnight Express. Let's get to booking. All right, so here we go with St. John versus Bennett. And I'm pretty certain we had Reggie Bennett win the last time, so we're going to have Vivian St. John go over this time. There it is. Vivian St. John goes over. And remember, folks, we are in our last block here until we go into a new tour cycle. And when we add our new tour, uh, add our new tour cycle, we are going to... Let me rephrase that. <laughs> when we enter our new tour cycle, we are going to add three additional towns, bringing us from nine towns to 12 towns total. We're also making some changes. We're no longer going to be stopping in Green Bay. We're going to be stopping in Milwaukee. And there's going to be some other changes too. So in three game weeks, we'll be headed there. All right, so I think we're the Top Guns versus the Texas Hangmen here. It is. 12-minute match. And when we get back, we'll take a look. And C. See, see it? That's Mike Moran. 
Okay, the top guns are due for a win here. Texas Hangman have won quite a few from them. So we're going to go ahead and give the win to John Paul. Bam. We are booked. So next we got Ali Khan versus DJ Peterson. We've got two babyface wins in a row. So I'd hate to do this in the mothership town here, one and a half of the Twin Cities, but I kind of have to. Ali Khan has got to get a win here. So we are going to do it the best way to do it. We're going to do it by manager interference. That dirty, no good, Sheik Adnan L. Casey is going to interfere on behalf of his Afghan communist, Ali Khan. Here we got De Beers versus Blackwell. This one goes 14. And there is Jerry Blackwell. We're going to leave this one open-ended. Well, let's take a look here. Okay, Colonel De Beers is going to win this one. There we go. Keeping that series even. Sheik Adnan LKC versus Ray Stevens. Ray Stevens is going to go over. This is a 16 and about, I'm pretty certain. Nope, still 14. Make that adjustment. Ray Stevens goes over. Very nice. And let's take a look. Rip Oliver versus Jerry Lawler. We'll leave that one open-ended, but I think we... We all know who's going to end up winning that one. There's Rip Oliver. Let's plug in Jerry Lawler. And we're booked. Mr. Saito versus Bob Backlund. Eighteen minute match. This has been an outstanding feud we've had going. And let's double check to see who's ahead to go ahead and even it out. Okay, Saito won the last time, so Backlund goes ahead and wins this time. He's beating the IWGP. Heavyweight champion, of course, in 1987. People didn't really fully understand what was going on in Japan, so they probably didn't realize the status that Mr. Saito held in Japan. But the AWE fans certainly knew Mr. Saito was a terrific wrestler. And this has been such an outstanding feud, folks. We're going to go 30 minutes on this one. And do we want to make it a gimmick match? No. There's no reason to make it a gimmick match. It'd be cool if we did a two out of three falls match, but it doesn't look like there is one for tag team wrestling here. So that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get this one booked up. And as you know... The Midnight Rockers won those titles by accident in Winnipeg. And by accident, I mean it was not my intention for them to win the tag title. But they did. So we're rolling right along with it. It's okay storyline-wise. Doesn't hurt anything. And making sure the Midnight Rockers get the win here in St. Paul. They're going to be greeted with a hero's welcome coming back with the, with the tag team championship. And notice how I said championship. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, and, and I feel I, I, I have the right to do so. I am 40 years old. 
I have been watching pro wrestling since 1984. And since the invention of the internet, I have watched thousands and thousands and thousands of matches dating back to the 50s. As a matter of fact, this morning, I just watched Luthez versus Vern Gagne in 1953 from Chicago. So my point with, with giving you my background with watching pro wrestling is I've noticed a new trend in the last year. And I've heard it said on WWE television, and I hear it said on podcasts all the time, and it drives me absolutely crazy. I do not understand why people refer to the tag team title as the tag team championships. Multiple. What exactly are the multiple championships we're talking about here? The tag title is one title. It's one championship. Yes, it has two belts, but it is one title and it is one championship. You should not be referring to the tag team title as the tag team championships. It drives me nuts. Now, in certain circumstances, like in All Japan, where you have a unified world tag team title, that's actually two, that's actually two separate championships. It really is. The Triple Crown is actually three separate championships. So in those circumstances, I suppose you could call it the championships in that, those circumstances, but they've also merged that into one title now. So it is not tag team championships. It is tag team championship. It's one title. It's one championship. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Now that I got that off my chest, let's go ahead and start our show. All right, Vivian St. John gets the win. These two only score a 25. Not good, but what are you going to do? All right, the Top Guns beat the Texas Hangmen here. This match only gets a 28 overall. Again, it's going to take a while for that popularity to build up. Ali Khan defeats DJ Peterson with that power slam after that dirty, no good, chic Adnan LKC interfered. Let's take a look and see if there's any other knocks. DJ Peterson is fatigued. We had him in the spot show the night before. Okay. Yeah, you know, this this blows my mind. I realize that he's working for another company, but in real life, wrestlers work seven days a week, sometimes nine or ten matches a week. And these people are fatigued if they work two matches in three days. And the AWA that we were running our tours here it doesn't get much easier on a wrestler. So I, I never understood that about this game. But again, as I've said before, TEW 2020 is not designed to be for classic wrestling. Uh, TEW 2020 is designed for modern day episodic television wrestling. So now here's one I've never seen until a little while ago. Ali Khan was penalized for chemistry. Fades due to manager. Can anybody explain to me what that means, fades due to manager? Because he has, as far as I know, great chemistry with Sheik Adnan LKC. So what does that mean? If any of you know, please chime in on the comments below. Let me know what's up. All right, De Beers versus Blackwell. De Beers gets the win, hits him with that pancake pile driver, and this little feud stays, stays hot. Ray Stevens hits the bombs away. This one's over for the Sheik. Jerry Lawler gets the win again with the Flying Fist Drop. Very nice score overall. An 80 for those two. Well done. Huge, huge score right here. Huge score. Now that's the way I like to see it. 79, 89 and gets an 87 overall. That's the way it should be. So Bob Backlund gets the win with the cross face Chicken Wing over the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Of course... We don't recognize him as such in the AWA because we don't pay attention to that stuff. But Bob Backlund gets the win, helps this feud continue going. These two got a good thing going. I'm glad we have them paired up. And here's our main event. Scores an 85 overall. Again, Randy Rose sandbagged us a little bit, but not a bad score. Let's take a look at the dirt sheets. Probably going to be the typical inexperience. There it is. There it is. Randy Rose struggles. Randy Rose is the weak link. No doubt about it. Randy Rose was a pretty good wrestler, 
and Randy Rose made a, a darn good tag team with Dennis Condry. So um, I have no reason not to keep them together. I also don't feel it necessary to edit it out because it is legit. Randy Rose was was not as good as Dennis Condry or or Bobby Eaton in that tandem, uh, but they were still a good team. So. There we go, overall 85, and I have a feeling here, folks, we're not going to get a, a gain, a popularity gain, because of the fact that it is Friday in the last week of October, and we've probably maxed out our gains. So let's finish the show here, and we did get an increase in popularity. I spoke too soon there. So we're going to make a speech here. We're going to point out. Mr. Saito and Bob Backlund, in my opinion, they had match of the card. And we're also going to give some credit to DJ Peterson here, who was willing to take the loss to give a little bit of a rub to Ali Khan, our communist Afghani. All right. So we are going to point out Mr. Saito as a good example. We're going to uh, praise Bob Backlund for a great performance. And we're going to compliment DJ Peterson. So we're going to go ahead and make our speeches here. Saito's pleased, Backlund's pleased, and DJ Peterson is pleased. Excellent. And we're going to roll on back to the uh, main screen here. Ricky Knight is the father, as far as I know, of um, who's that woman that did all the nudie videos in the WWF who's retired now? Paige. Yes, Paige is her name. Okay. Let's take a look at our incoming, see if anybody's trash talking anybody. <laughs> they are not. We got seven, almost 780,000 viewers. Very well. DJ Peterson's tired. Rip Oliver's tired. Sorry, fellas. You guys have to keep working. Let's see if there's anything else on the big main screen here. Oh, Earthquake Ferris lost the TV title, the Pacific Northwest TV title, to Art Barr, who was a weird-looking dude. And who at this time period was actually working, and I think it was EML L with Eddie Guerrero. They made a really good tag team down there. I think they were called Los Gringos or something like that. But that's where in real life, that's where Art Barr was. He was working down there. All right. Let's see what else is going on here. The Beast is uh an old time wrestler. Apparently he's working in All Star Wrestling right now which is pretty realistic. There he is, 48 years old, Ivan Cormier. And he's the, I think, the oldest brother of Leo Burke and Bobby Kay. Leo Burke was a great wrestler. Actually, all three of the Cormier brothers were really good wrestlers. Um, I just happen to think Leo Burke was the best of the three of them. And um, we're probably going to use him at some point. All-Star Wrestling is not doing well here, are they? They're almost $350,000 in the hole. Oof. So uh, in the original run on this, Bobby K and the Beast, they were not in the game. I went ahead and added them in the game um, one or two versions ago. I can't remember. So let's take a look. NWA at a live event show. Fernandez defeated Bill Irwin in a cage. They got an 88 overall. Good for them. Um, overall, this is a pretty lousy card. But for those of you that are playing 7.0, you don't have to deal with this nonsense. You get to see the best of the best. World Class ran. Here's their television show. That's a nice main event right there. Al Perez and Steve Dahl isn't bad. Not bad. Now, I made a correction, too, in the 7.0 version that I didn't understand that the world-class show that was run on Friday nights in the Sportatorium was not also a house show. It was strictly television. So I went ahead and made that adjustment. So in 7.0, you're not dealing with a Sportatorium show on top of the TV show. They were live every Friday night. They did not tape. So that was the show. So there we go, folks. Let's see what else is going on here. UWF ran. Nothing nothing too crazy there. Nothing to write home about. Let's see what Stampede did. Ooh. DeSalvo beat Defosis 
in a cage match. Again, we talked about Gilles Defossé before. I'm a big fan of his. NWF ran. Again, they're probably so in the hole from not being able to draw and having these huge talent bills. I mean, this is a big card. They got Stan Hansen, David Schultz, Rocky Johnson, the Wild Samoans. A show like this would have cost them a fortune. And Windy City Wrestling had their TV show. Bigelow defeats Hurricane Smith to, de uh, to claim the to retain the title. And who's Team Life? Oh, they split apart the Windy City Dream Team. So Team Life is Lance Allen and Stormy Apollo. Pretty silly considering Lance Allen and his partner, whose name escapes me at the moment, were a really good team as the Windy City Dream Team. But what are you going to do? All right, folks, that's going to conclude us for this one. Let's go ahead and update our touring schedule. We'll be back tomorrow with tour number 102, and we're going to be in Minneapolis, one half of the Windy Cities and our home of operation. So that one is going to see the big main event of Scott Hall and Larry Zabisco again. And thanks for being with us, folks. I appreciate it. If you would like version 7.0 of the Supermod, go to braddrake.net. Go ahead and drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to send it over to you. Join us on Facebook and conversation. Facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. That's Facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. And also, please, here on YouTube, give us a like, share this video video with your friends, share it all over social media, share it everywhere, share it to the people at work, make photocopies at work of the link, and put it on other people's desks, and in their lockers, and in their mailboxes, and help us get the word out about this show, help us continue to grow, and please, subscribe, 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 if you haven't done so already. We drop a show a day, and you'll get to hear it as soon as it comes out, if you subscribed. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.